verse 46, And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder, and on your descendants forever. You must hear and understand this. this these curses are for a sign and a wonder forever. Meaning, you stay in these lands and you will see the results of the curses. You will see the curses on this people. 47, because you did not serve Yahuwah. This is the reason why. He's saying because you did not serve Yahuwah with happiness, with gladness of heart and everything. Therefore, you shall, listen, I told you, you're going to serve one or the other. And he's saying right here, um, you're going to serve your enemies. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom Yahuwah will send against you in in hunger, thirst, nakedness, and need of everything. He will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. You was put in the land of your captivity for destruction. This is what you need to understand. This is why he said, deliver yourself. You have to understand what the scriptures are saying. Jeremiah 16 and 13. Therefore, I will cast you out of this land into a land that you do not know neither you nor your fathers and there you shall serve other mighty ones day and night where i will show you no favor you see this is you in the land of your captivity if you still scattered in all the lands he scattered us serving other mighty ones serving your enemies you're going to serve the father or you're going to serve the enemies you're going to serve other mighty ones day and night and he will show you no favor. This is what he's saying. Okay, Baruch 3. I'm going to skip a little. And I'm going to read the, the end of verse 2. Because, listen, because we have sinned against him. This is one of our biggest problems. We, we broke his Torah. We didn't keep his commandments. Look at, look at verse 3. It says, you endure forever. The most high endure forever, but we perish utterly. You Are you hearing this? He endures forever. We scattered in these lands. We're perishing daily. Look around. Are we not dropping like flies? Do anyone care? Our people are dying left and right. We're being hung from trees. We're being shot, murdered. We're killing each other. This is a plan. This was all strategy. This was a strategy and a plan. Because of what's written in scripture, we are perishing utterly every day. It says, O Yahuwah, Elohim, Elohim of Yashara, hear now the prayers of the dead. Hear the prayers of dead Bani Yashara. Do you hear this? Yes, your good is dead. Remember the message? Sheep prepare for the slaughter. Remember that message. If you haven't seen it, you, sh you shall watch it because this is our people. We are sheep prepared for the slaughter. And he's saying, your prayers, many of our people pray. These are prayers from dead Bani Yashirah. They good as dead. Uh, for for Yahuwah is the one that caused these plagues to cleave to us. He caused these plagues to cleave to us. Okay, I'm going to jump down to verse 8. Behold, this is what it's saying. We are yet this day in our captivity. Why are we still in our captivity? But we're reading right here. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where you have scattered us for a reproach, a curse, to be subject to payments. Whatever payments they require, we have to pay it. If it's our life, we have to pay it. And there's no punishment for the wicked for slaughtering the righteous because it is written. Because we, we, because we did not obey, we did not listen, we did not keep, we did not serve him. This is the reason why. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, fathers which departed from Yahuwah, our Elohim. Hear, hear Yahshua, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. So we're, we're about to get a little wisdom here. And he's saying, give an ear and understand wisdom. Verse 10, check this out. How did this happen, Yashara? How? He said, we're being asked the question. How did this happen? Did you end up in your enemy's land 
and you waxing old in a strange country, and you are defiled with the dead. How many times do we read this in scripture? How many times? He, this, is, this should remind you. He says, separate yourself from the abominations of the people and of the land. We, if you're still in these lands, especially Babylon, you are defiled with the dead. You are counted as dead. I told you, you're good as dead. And this is why, 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 why is it, why is it people talking about this? Why not? This is that are, you're counted with them that go down to the grave. You are numbered. You're counted. If, now, for those, Here's a, here's another point. For those that already came out, and there's many of us, many, many, you have no idea, many of us are within his borders. We are not counted with the grave. Now, we are in a position, I'm going to talk about that later, but we are in a different position, and we are not counted as they are counted to go down to the grave. This is verse 12. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom remember last day's wisdom remember these messages you have to put them all together you have to put all these messages together that you who has given us for you had walked in the, if you had walked in the in the way of your it says you should have dwelled in shalom forever if if you walked in the way but what does it say learn where is wisdom we do not know wisdom we don't know where wisdom is. It's in the scriptures. It's in the prophets. But remember, we are not absorbed with his word. We do not have his word within us. We have not absorbed his word like a sponge. I mean, till you are running over. We, we haven't done this. And so we don't know where wisdom is. It's asking, where is strength? Where is understanding? We have no idea where our strength lies. We have no idea where our understanding lies. And we are comfortable in the lands of our captivity because our enemy has given us a little sense, a false sense of comfort. Uh, that you may know also where your length of days is. So if you know where wisdom and strength and understanding, you will find your wisdom of days and life here, salvation, true salvation. True salvation means being saved from death itself. Where is the light? of the eyes of shalom who have found out her place who he's asking a question or who have come into her treasure who not many are coming into her place who have found her place and come into her treasure many have no idea what this is talking about where are the princes of the heathens come for such to rule upon the beast of the earth listen to what it's saying here we know that the, the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. We understand this. And so this he has the right to rule over the people that have that have broke to her, that have sinned against the most high. Baruch 4 and 32. The cities which the, the children have served shall be punished. And she that received your sons. Now I want you to understand a point here. It says the cities with an S on it. Which your children have served. So many people have deceived themselves by their own vain opinion. This is what's written in Ecclesiastes. You deceive yourself by your own vain opinion. And you think Babylon is a city. One city. We did not serve in one city. Your mind is so blinded. You have no idea. We serve cities. And this is what the prophet, this is what Jeremiah is talking about. The waters shall come above her cities. Go back and study. Please, if not, you will perish. That's why he says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Psalms 101 and 6. My eyes shall be, this is what he's saying. My eyes shall be on the, on the, the righteous of the land, that they may dwell with me. So the righteous will be in the land. Why? That they may dwell with me. We need to know where he's dwelling. When we know where he's dwelling, then we will know where our dwelling place is. He who walks in a perfect way shall serve me. This group, they, this group of people will serve him. The ones that walk in a perfect way. 
Zechariah 3 and 9. For then I will restore to the people a pure language, and they that they all may call on the name of Yahuwah to serve him on one accord. And this is something we know about him restoring our language, a pure language. But many, we, we, we miss the part where it says to serve him with one accord because we don't know what this means to serve him. Ezekiel 20 and 40. For on my mountain, on my, the mountain of height of Yasharal, says Yahuwah, there, here, here is where the people will serve him in the kingdom. Watch this. There, all the house of Yasharal, all of them, in the land, in the land, not the lands of our captivity, those that came out of her, that delivered themselves, that we didn't sit around and wait for him. We didn't sit around and do nothing like most of our people are sitting around doing nothing. We took the difficult way. We didn't take the easy way out. Remember, difficult is the way. This easy thing, this easy thing will get you killed. Anything that's easy. It's easy to stay in the land of your captivity and say, we don't have to do anything. The Most High is going to deliver us. It makes no sense. And then he's going to deliver. Listen, you're saying we serve a father that will deliver some of his people that keep his commandments. And he's not delivering others that keep his commandments. This makes no sense sense and there's something wrong with people that's thinking like this i have a message on that and i will bring it out and you will understand why i people think this way why can't we see the scriptures for what they are saying why can't we take the most high word for what he what it is saying he says all of them in the land shall serve me all of us in the land will serve him there i will set them and there I require your offerings, your first fruits, your sacrifice together with all your Kadash things. So we see in here, here we go, offerings once again, first fruits. How, do, how can you get first fruits unless you put your seed in the Kadash ground? How? You have to be in the Kadash land? How? I have one more scripture here. I didn't know if I would have time, but I have one more scripture. And I went over this scripture before. This is for the new ones that come to this channel and they do not go back and read some of and, and, and understand some of the previous messages. This is 2 Ezra 16. And again, I went over pre all of all of this. Let me see. Starting at verse 35. It says, hear now these things and understand them, you servants of Yahuwah. He's saying, hear now and understand these things. Behold, the word of Yahuwah, receive it. Here is the word of Yahuwah. And he's saying, receive it, receive this word. Here come a word for you. He says, believe not the mighty ones whom Yahuwah spoke. Behold, plagues draw near and are not slack. Plagues that's about to hit this earth, they draw near and, and is not slack. As a woman with child in the ninth month, Bring forth her son with two or three hours of her birth. Great pains come past her womb, which pains when the child come forth. They slack, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the, pl the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. And the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Listen at this. Verse 40. O my people, hear my word. Make ready to the battle. This is his word. Hear my word. Make ready to the battle. And in those evils be even as pilgrims on the earth. Pilgrims travel from a wicked place to a Kadash place. This is what pilgrims mean. I brought out all of this. He that sells, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buys as if one would lose. Meaning, sell what you have. Flee up out the midst of Babylon. Get back within his orders. And those that's buying from the ones that's selling, you will lose. You absolutely will lose. Once again, this is something that I've already brought out, but people don't understand. After this message, you should understand who serve him and who serve him not. You must do the works of Yahuwah. You must put your seed in the ground. You must bring forth your first fruits, and you must 
bring it to knowing. Shalom.